Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome to Ruin Eve. Dawn of the final day. We are this close to the official release for the Ruin DLC for FNAF Security Breach. And I thought, what better way to spend our final few moments ruinless than talk about my personal predictions and hopes and desires for the DLC. And so I've created this handy dandy bingo sheet, which I'm not really going to be using as an actual bingo sheet, it's just you know, bullet points, topics I want to talk about. So if you are excited for the Ruin DLC, because we will be playing the full thing and getting all the juicy secrets on this channel, don't forget to scroll down, tickle that subscribe button so you stay notified on all the FNAF news and the Ruin news. And let's start it off by something that I don't see a lot of people talk about nowadays with the Ruin DLC, but definitely something I do think we will see, and that is Glamrock Bonnie. Now, there's not much actual evidence for Glamrock Bonnie actually showing up, but I think it is in Stewell's best interest. In the main game, Glamrock Bonnie is referred to only in like, what, maybe a few duffel bags and a vague Freddy quote up at Bonnie Bull, and immediately every FNAF fan fell in love with the idea and the concept of Glamrock Bonnie, which is why I do think we'll at least get more mentions of him, maybe a bit more backstory. I do think we will see his official design. I think just logically, that is the easiest next step to take with the character. Again, there's not much evidence but I do think it's something I'd love to see. I know a lot of other FNAF fans would love to see a bit more Glamrock Bonnie. And speaking of characters that need to be built up just a little bit more because they weren't giving the full spotlight in the main game, Vanessa and Vanny. I'm not gonna lie, it was embarrassing how little screen time they had in main game Security Breach. Listen, I'm a defender of Security Breach. I enjoy the game, but even I can admit they got shelved. So weirdly too, because Vanessa and Vanny are pretty, again, popular characters in the fandom. All the marketing leading up to the game had Vanny and Vanessa almost front and center, quite literally front and center in this poster. And then they show up for a couple scenes, then dip for the rest of the game. It was a very lackluster performance on both their parts. So again, in Stuel's best interest, just another set of characters that need to be given more spotlight. Because I mean, there are even still fans who are split. Are they the same person? You know, they look alike in the Vanny, you know, burning ending but then the post credit scene of that ending you've got Vanessa up on the rooftop is that the spirit of Vanessa is it just symbolizing something or again are they two different people are they twins what the hell's going on with them they did try and lean into the backstory of Vanessa in the like collectible CD tapes but again it's FNAF security breach they're so vague with what they're trying to explain I do think we need to see more of these characters I'm also very shocked going back to how prominent they were in the marketing for the main game I'm very shocked that we We've seen quite literally nothing of Vanny and Vanessa leading up to the release of Ruin. I just really think we need a revival of these guys. They need their second chance in the spotlight because they were just done so dirty in the main game. But someone who got a lot of spotlight in the main game, clean segue once again, we've got evil Glamrock Freddy. Glamrock Freddy was our guardian. He was Glam Daddy in the main game, supporting us along our journey. Good job, superstar. And I don't think that's going to be the case this time around. In fact, I think he's going to be against us. It would be such a drastic shift to have good old Freddy Fazbear, you know, tag along Freddy, but not the actual tag along Freddy, go from helpful, friendly, kind to Gregory to now chasing after him, wanting to kill him, being the big bad villain that Gregory once knew, once loved, and cared for. Freddy, we're best friends. Why are you trying to kill me now? You know, the main game really made it a staple to everyone. Hey, Freddy's your best friend. You can call him anytime you want. You can walk around with him, explore the Pizza Plex, find gifts, you know, hear his funny jokes about water fountains. And it's such a simple yet, I'd say, efficient twist to have something we once relied on now no longer be in our possession and in fact be turning against us. We're going to talk about endings in a second, but as we can see from just the one shot of him in the trailer, Freddy's pretty beat up. Some people even speculate he might not have a head, and again, we'll get to that later on. Hey, I'd be pretty pissed if I were Freddy too. I'm trying to help this child escape and he just goes around, goofs off, and now I'm a bunch of broken parts and allegedly there even was a point in the main game where freddy was going to turn on us based on unused dialogue so again recycling something that i think would have been an interesting twist already well if we don't have freddy going along with us who is going to be our new guardian For the longest time a lot of people have wanted this new dlc to be a choose your own guardian type dlc we can explore the ruined pizza plex with roxanne or chica or monty i'll be honest this is one of the spaces i'm the least confident in we already have the rock 
proxy talkie we use to communicate with Gregory. And so I feel like he's just going to be the fill in guardian, you know, Cassie, go this way to find me. Cassie, you know, watch out for Roxanne because that's her area up ahead. I've been through this. I know how to guide you through this. I suppose it is possible with our brand new FAS device. That's what I'm calling it with the two antennas at the top. We could hack into Roxanne and make her good. When we see her in the trailer, she does look kind of curious as to what Cassie's doing. And like I said, with our FAS device, there are two little holes in the eye sockets of Roxanne's new mask that look like we could fit our device inside those sockets. So maybe we hack Roxanne, we get her out of Glitch Trap's control or Afton's control or the Mimic's control, whoever's controlling the animatronics at this point, and we bring her on our side. I suppose it is possible maybe Vanessa's on her side because again, there is that free Vanny ending in the main game where we free Vanessa from, again, the control of Glitch Trap or Afton, Mimic, what have you. I'm not too confident on the idea of Vanessa helping us, but again, I do think it's an option. The next space we got is Chica Chowder. Now this one, maybe I'm alone on, but I think Chica Chowder is just a bit more of a joke. If you don't know, Security Breach's code name is Quarters. If you look on your, like, files on your computer, you're gonna find it under the Quarters folder. When they update the Steam files and we can see it on, like, Steam DB, etc., it comes up under Quarters. Well, the same thing happens for Ruin, except now it's called Chowder. And on one of Daco's charity streams, we actually got a Chica Chowder poster. Now the interesting thing about this poster is that the copyright for it was before we even knew about the Ruin DLC being called Chowda. And maybe I'm alone on this because I've talked to a few other people and they just seem to think it's a joke, but I don't know, man. It seems like such a weird joke to make, you know? Based on the style of the poster, it looks like it could just be like a little shop, attraction at the Mega Pizzaplex, which, I mean, would give it something to be, but... I don't know. I'm curious. This is the space I want to know your thoughts on the most. But speaking of areas, we got scrapped areas up next. Now, this is something I definitely do think has already been confirmed as we've seen in the gameplay trailer. There's at least one shot of a hallway that seems like it was scrapped from the main game, but now is coming back in ruin. Again, it's one of those spaces where I'm like, it's just in Sewell's best interest if you think about it. A lot of people were complaining about the scrapped content in Security Breach, one of those things being the scrapped areas. This includes like all the tunnels connecting places that would make traversing the pizza plex a lot easier i also wouldn't be surprised if we have areas that we could access in the main game now be restricted to us in the ruin dlc it seems like we're not going to be able to go to the daycare theater anymore because if you look in the gameplay trailer there's a whole bunch of crates and tape blocking off the entrance to the theater so i do think there's going to be a mix of here are old areas you couldn't access before that you can go to now but also because of that we will be taking away some of your fan favorite locations just because you know, the pizza plex has collapsed. There's tape everywhere. There's boxes everywhere. You just can't pass by those things. Now, next up, we got a darker tone, which is something we already know plenty about. Steerwool has made sure it's bashed over our heads. Hey, this DLC is going to be darker. Isn't that what you want? A lot of people were complaining about how bright and vibrant everything was in the main game. How funny all the pretty quips were, you know? How much personality the Glam Rocks had with Roxanne's like anxiety, depression based on her appearance type stuff. How much dialogue Gregory had. How big Vanessa's tits. But this DLC is definitely going to be switching it up because there's going to be a lot of cramped areas. Very claustrophobic tunnels it seems like we might have to crawl through. Steerwool did mention in their game jolt interview that they wanted to make it feel a bit more like the daycare section where you're walking around trying to turn on all the generators. As well as the endoskeleton section with all the Glam Rock endoskeletons where if you look at them, they stop, but if you turn away, they start moving towards you. Those are both very dark, claustrophobic areas. So I'm not surprised at all that they're taking influence from those two sections because they're also, honestly, some of the more praised aspects of Security Breach. Next up, we got the exterior of the Pizzaplex. This is something I'm kind of confident in. We see very quick glimpses of the outside of the Pizzaplex, whether it be in the 6am minigame or in a comic book style in one of the, like, van endings. But because we do see Cassie, the new protagonist we're going to be playing as in the DLC, enter the Pizzaplex for the first time in the gameplay trailer, as opposed to what Gregory was like, where he's already in the Pizzaplex at the start of Security Breach. Do you think maybe there's a chance we get an early cutscene where it's Cassie just living her life, you know, maybe at her house, maybe just exploring the outside of the Pizzaplex, and then, oh, her walkie-talkie turns on. Gregory, what are you doing? I don't know why she is such a deep guttural manly voice but also something to point out it's daytime 
you know this is the first time really that we actually see daylight in a FNAF game which is kind of funny there's a whole bunch of shrubs outside possibly a whole lot of construction going on as well because we see a whole bunch of again caution tape ladders forklifts inside the pizza plex and like i said because the place has collapsed there's probably going to be little cracks and breaks through the ceilings and the walls that maybe we could peek behind and we could see what's going on outside maybe there's an ending where we just fully go outside i don't know i do think ruin with its story is going to be a bit more linear so there's not you know complete open world but walking outside getting some fresh air touching some grass could be nice clearer story do I, do I really need to explain this? Okay, okay. I think one of the main goals with the Ruin DLC should be correcting large criticisms people had with the main game. And I hope that something Stuel has taken into account. One of the biggest <laughs> complaints with main game SB was that the story was all over the place. Sometimes stuff just didn't get an explanation. We collected these duffel bags, which would give us a message on our Faz watch digitally somehow. Like even stuff like that. What, what's going on there? It's a duffel bag. How does that get on my Faz watch? Obviously, with FNAF, the story is going to be vague as hell. That's the reason why FNAF is popular. We can all admit that. I mean, there's still a point in Daco's interview with Steel Wool where Ray McCaffrey says, oh yeah, Scott would just like give us things to put into the game. And I'm like, sure, you know, whatever you say, boss man, I don't need an explanation for this. I love Steel Wool and I love Ray McCaffrey. He's a great guy. But I do think there needs to be a lot more communication between Scott and Steel Wool and with Steel Wool and us as the player. I can't really give feedback on how they should do that because again, I don't know the lore. But I just, again, for the sake of the theory, community and everyone in the fan base still will you gotta catch up bro now we move on to jump scare sequences this is again something we've seen in the trailer it looks like we can actually engage a bit more with the with the jump scares at the very least we do know this clip with monty is a jump scare because for one frame exactly one frame i believe we can see static at the end of the animation so instead of all the animatronics just like Wow, jumping in front of our face, screaming at us for two seconds and then cut to static. We're actually going to get a little bit of animation, t jock style. For like nine years, FNAF has just been jump in your face for two seconds, cut to static. Oh, got to restart. But this actually switches things up quite a lot. It gives the jump scares a lot more personality. Something to look at than just a spooky thing to throw in a Markiplier thumbnail. And also something I thought of, this might be a bit of a stretch, but in that newsletter Ray McCaffrey put out on the Steel Wool website, they point out Ruin's moment to moment is built around patience and timing. Now this might be a massive stretch, but honestly that screams quick time events to me. Think about how innovative that would be for FNAF. You're in that animation with Monty. All of a sudden, a button pops up. Spam E to escape. Because we do see Cassie like like holding open Monty's jaw like obviously she doesn't want to die give us that option don't make every death a guaranteed start over give us a chance to fight for ourselves I just thought that'd be pretty interesting it's something I'd love to see with FNAF because again for like nine years jump scares have just been so basic I'd love to see them get switched up and also quickly going back to that Roxanne clip I'm unsure if this is a jump scare it does look like Roxanne has Cassie in her grasp you know it looks like she caught her but the way she looks like so curiously at Cassie I don't know I feel like that's not a jump scare I feel like that's probably some scripted event with Roxanne next up we got the eclipse and yeah the space is just the eclipse character I want him to be so cool we got confirmation that Kellen Goff the voice actor for the daycare attendant and like every other Freddy basically in FNAF is coming back to voice the character that's already a good sign the eclipse's design looks good and I am calling him the eclipse for now just because I mean that's such a cool name and if we get ruined daycare attendant, man, that's gonna be so lame. Come on, Steel Wool. I just want this character to be so cool because just like Glamrock Bonnie and Vanessa and Vanny, there is so much love for this character. If Steel Wool is not putting in the time and effort to make this character more fleshed out and appealing and cool to the fans, what are you doing? I really hope he gets more screen time as well. I was very disappointed as as well as everyone when the daycare attendant showed up in the daycare segment at like 1 a.m. in the game and then didn't come back. Yeah, Moon popped in at the end of each hour, but just hop into her charging station. He's gone in like two seconds. We do see him in the gameplay trailer only in the daycare, but then again, we did get that teaser for the release date, which had daycare attendant in the actual lobby. That could have just been a render they made specifically for that teaser, so maybe he doesn't explore the lobby, but come on. Again, 
everyone loves him. We want more of the daycare attendant, please. We also got to speculate how the sun side and the moon side are going to react to them basically being one at this point. In the clip we see in the gameplay trailer, the lights are off in the daycare, but we also see daycare attendant wave at us. So it seems like they're friendly, they're in their sun state right now. Would be pretty crazy if there was like a Jekyll Hyde situation where they switch like mid conversation, like, oh yeah, come into the daycare and I'm going to eat you up and I'm gonna rip apart your limbs and steal your kidneys. All in all, just make the daycare attendant cool and call him Eclipse. That's, that's really all I want. Surprise ruin characters. So this is talking about DJ Music Man and the Wind Up Music Mans and the Staff Bots and the Map Bot who <sighs> doesn't seem like he's going to be coming back. I have seen some people speculate, oh, what if Ray's just lying to us, which it's a possibility, but I don't see why you would just lie about something like that. Because what, we boot up Ruin and, and we see Map Bot on the floor, you know, with his arm out still trying to give us a map and it's like, oh, cool, Map Bot's here. So what the hell was that Ray tweet about, you know? But characters like Ruined DJ Music Man, think about how terrifying that would be. I was on a call with the hottest dog and we had this crazy speculation that all the tiny wind-up DJ Music Mans would like crawl out of his mouth or crawl out of the, the holes in the, in the West Arcade and they would all like be under his control. If they're going for a darker tone, something like that would absolutely sell this game as being a lot scarier and creepier. Giant withered DJ Music Man like chasing after you with all the tiny withered wind up music man's like crawling underneath him like it's just so cool thinking about it i said withered but you know what i mean ruin dj music man i do think we're gonna see him staff bots i feel like they're gonna cut back on those guys because that was again another major complaint for the main game i was very happy we didn't see them in the gameplay trailers we did see the endos lurking around but it seemed like they kind of took the spot of the of the staff bots but then we got that taco charity stream there was one in the gift shop and it's like <coughs> Just let them die. Next up, we've got Cassie's role. We already know, thanks to the official newsletter from Ray from Steel Wool, that Cassie and Gregory are friends. They're not like long lost siblings. They're not, you know, robots. At least I hope, I guess they could be robots. They could still be robot friends, but we're gonna hope they're not robots. A lot of people have pointed out the name Cassie sounds like Cassidy, the soul that possesses Golden Freddy. At least I think that's still the working theory. I don't know. Again, I'm not caught up with the lore. It could be some obscure book character I don't know about. Uh, but Cassidy mixed in with Charlie, who, as far as I'm aware, is still possessing the puppet, Henry's daughter. Uh, but because we haven't really seen the puppet as of late, at least not that I can remember. Same thing with Golden Freddy. It seems like those characters just have easter eggs here and there like the it's me sign in the in the curse of dreadbeard dlc but for like main game stuff i'm pretty sure both of them have been pretty much absent completely because of that reasoning i feel like those characters are supposed to be at this point in the timeline put to rest they're freed whatever again maybe there's some book logic that i don't know about that it's like oh they're actually still here but i don't know if there's an actual connection with cassidy and cassidy and charlie I guess we're gonna have to wait and find out. Why Cassie agrees to go into this abandoned, destroyed pizza plex to find Grant. Like, they must be best of buds, man. I, I wouldn't wish that upon my best friend to, to go through something like that. So I am curious, with a DLC that already has a lot to explain from the base game with Vanessa and Vanny and Patient 40, 46, which we're gonna get into in a quick second, also adding on a new character, which also needs her own backstory and explanation, it's a lot of lore to explain, and like I said earlier, hopefully it's gonna be <laughs> crystal clear. Now, speaking of Patient 46, we got Tales from the Pizzaplex links. This was more so talking about, again, Patient 46, because apparently in the story GGY in the Tales from the Pizzaplex series, uh, it kind of pretty outright confirms, but not explicitly, that Gregory is the Patient 46. Again, if you're coming to this video for lore, I am not, I'm not that guy, pal. I'm not that guy, okay? But just for like general theories, I am curious to know how much lore we're going to get from the Pizzaplex books, uh, how much connections are going to be there, because I've seen other people speculate we could see Haps, which is the character on the second cover, who is like a janitorial unit, retrieval unit, um, to like make sure everyone's safe in the place structures as far as I, I believe. I've seen other people speculate, uh, the Bobby Dots, you know, they have a pretty big presence in the, in the books with their generation one and generation two depictions. The reason why I'm so hesitant about these links though is because, let's, let's, let's be real. This is not our first rodeo where we read something in the books and we're like, that's showing up in the games. Remember the Afton amalgamation and how he was going to fight? baby and, and the puppet at the end of security breach that that sure happened right next up we've got it was the mimic all along 
This is like my third or fourth time talking about this space because personally, I find it a very difficult topic to talk about, especially as someone who admittedly doesn't know a whole lot about the mimic, doesn't keep up with the lore, the books, etc. And maybe because of those reasons, that's why I find it unlikely we will see the mimic at the end of Ruin, but introducing a character officially again. So brief rundown on the mimic. A lot of people are speculating he's actually glitch trap and burn trap because the mimic is a character introduced in the tales book where he can mimic. Do you see, do you see what they did there? Other people. And he just so happened to see something he couldn't, he wasn't supposed to see. And now he's mimicking Afton. As you can tell, a very complex character, a character that shifts a lot of what we know about FNAF. So to introduce him four years later after glitch trap, like one and a half years later after burn trap, in a DLC, which maybe not many people will see as opposed to like a main game entry, whatever, whatever. I just find it very unlikely. I, I don't, don't get mad at me. But now let's finally move on to this character. Because who the hell is this? Now, I don't think it's the Mimic. Because the Mimic, as far as I'm aware, again, doesn't actually take on the form of a rabbit. He's more the tiger. Rock is in the house tonight. I don't think it's Glamrock Bonnie, because he's got five fingers and the glam rocks only have four fingers i think right now the best explanation for this guy is just glitch trap you know he is the physical version of glitch trap that we're probably gonna see in the virtual world which we'll get to later but yeah just going off past patterns of teasing characters at the end of gameplay trailers it after. Next up, we've got Bosses Rematch. This is something I'm very, very intrigued in and something I really, really hope actually happens because it'd be so cool. My main evidence for this is the gameplay trailer, actually. We see Cassie riding the Monty rides in Monty's Gator Golf over to the catwalks and then jumping onto the catwalks. There appears to be an autosave icon when that happens. Now, why would you save there unless something big's gonna happen that if you die it's gonna set you back pretty far why would cassie be going up to the catwalks anyway you know we do get a lot of imagery of monty in gator golf and even up on the catwalks there's explosion barrels maybe we blow up monty in the rematch you know and i do think you know obviously we're gonna run into those old characters we see chica roxy monty all walking around exploring and i think at the very least we'll get a monty rematch at least that's what i hope again based on the the trailer of Cassie going up to the catwalks again and the barrels that we can use to explode Monty, that'd be funny. But rematching Roxanne and Chica, I'm less confident in just because I don't really see much evidence for that. And also again, it'd be pretty repetitive. But I definitely do think we're gonna face off against the Blob again and Burn Trap again, just cause, I mean, their boss fight wasn't really anything special in the main game. They just kinda walked around for a bit. We pushed some buttons, dodged animatronics, cutscene. They get taken away. Where'd they go? I don't know. Next up, new arcades. There's a lot of arcades that we could talk about. A lot of people have been pointing towards the possibility of a sequel and maybe a trequel to Balloon World. Because that one left off on kind of a weird cliffhanger with the Eclipse character saying, I think, just see you soon or good night or one of those two. And just like how we got Princess Quest 2 and 3 in Security Breach, maybe we'll get Balloon World 2 and 3 in Ruin. I also hope we'll get activities and arcade games that were scrapped from the main game. This is again going back from scrapped content. Uh, Chica's Feeding Frenzy that was scrapped, but there were still elements of it in the main game, uh, at least in like the, the code, whatever. The bowling mini game in Bonnie's Bowl, it'd probably be pretty trashed up, but I'd still love to bowl. There was also that arcade conspiracy about the arcades like working together. That, that was a theory I never looked into, so I don't know if that was solved or not, but I do remember there were like arcades in the West Arcade that were all lit up on the screen, and I don't know if that was a visual bug or I don't know. But we're gonna be getting something with arcades, because the Monty Arcade in that, you know, teaser with Monty Golf, that's fully intact. That's not been crushed, that's not been destroyed, there's not a single scratch on it. There was also like several other holes in Monty Golf that were completely scrapped, the mini game. So I wonder if we're gonna be getting those again. It might not make sense for Cassie to stop, <laughs> you know, looking for Gregory and then be like, Gregory, hold on, I'm about to get the high score. But I, th I think the mini games were some of the more fun parts of Security Breach, so I would love to see more of those again. The Virtual World. This is again something we saw in the gameplay trailer when we put on the Help Wanted Curse of Dreadbear Vanny mask. How that got there, I got no freaking clue. Because it is certainly not the mask, you know, she wears in the main game. 
it is certainly not the mask that she drops in one of the endings so i do hope there's some actual explanation for that and not just cassie going look at this cool mask i found i'm gonna put it on but when we do put on the mask we see this virtual purple glitchy world now obviously this is afton's world this is the glitch trap realm maybe this is the only area we can see that new bunny character that again might be some new form of glitch trap who actually puts this on i'd assume it's just cassie and every now and then we can pop it on we can see secrets maybe we can see like glitch trap just like lurking behind us every now and then like hiding in rooms that'd be kind of cool but as for an actual gameplay function i'm not sure how much use it'll serve you know like maybe we got to do something in that realm to unlock an ending is it actually us playing as vanessa and putting on the mask you know maybe she survived the pizza plex crashing and she's like i gotta find all my stuff can't find the vanny suit but luckily i kept this old mask i don't know it's one of the more confusing and less confident spaces i have on here just because seems kind of out of nowhere seems like it doesn't really fit with what ruin's going for but we'll just have to wait and see though something else we got to talk about is the purple and green imagery like i said we get that in the virtual world but there's also purple and green steel wool logos on security breach tv vanessa has purple nails while cassie has green nails so there's some connection going on here with the colors purple and green there's also been a lot of people linking that back to obviously the purple guy and green well charlie does wear a green wristband in that fnaf 6 minigame does that reinforce the idea that cassie is some way connected to cassidy and also charlie because they both have the color green associated with them it's a bit of a stretch i just threw it on here because i thought it was interesting because there is so much imagery with that purple and green color palette i do wonder if it actually is going to serve a purpose and actually symbolize something with the characters or if it's just a cool color choice flying by these now we got new modes a lot of people are aware that security breach main game was going to have a few more extra modes like the gallery mode hide and seek survival now it would be really cool if with the release of the ruin deal see there was also an update to the main game that added in those scrapped content again bowling minigame chica's feeding frenzy the gallery those modes i find that unlikely though because they're already so busy with the dlc i'm not sure if they'd have the time to go back and do the main game but i think to make up for that i'd like to see a bit more modes with ruin these don't have to be anything super complex you don't have to shift the gameplay on its head and bring us a whole new experience you know it can be something simple as the gallery like you had that plan for the main game it didn't happen you did it with help wanted you do it again you know give us give us just something extra a place to view all the models a place to view all the collectibles we have a place to watch back all the cutscenes. like it, it can just be that just something very bare bones i wouldn't mind just something to look at and now we start moving on to end game ruin but first of all we got to talk about end game security breach because i've yet to give my stance on what the true ending is for the main game and i'll say right now i'm a firm believer in the afton ending being the real ending it is the only ending where we bust up roxanne chica and monty and we all see them all busted up again in the ruin trailer the pizza plex collapses in that ending wouldn't you know it the whole point of the dlc is that the pizza plex has collapsed it's in ruin i mean it's called the true ending in the files and it is the one where we face off against freaking afton and the blob like Seems like a logical true ending to me. Ah, oh, but Johnny Blocks in the post credit scene, Freddy and Gregory are up on the hill. Oh, this is freaking security breach. That could be symbolism. I don't know. Remember when Freddy said, Gregory, this elevator can only take one trip. How do they get back up? Though to call attention to the other sides, I have seen people speculate could be the ending where Freddy's, you know, only his head escapes because technically we don't see his head in the gameplay trailer. Steel Wool could be hiding the fact that he's decapitated. I just think logically, you know, from a narrative point of view, the ending that which has a cinematic cutscene where we face off against the two big like secret boss fight characters and it's called true ending. I mean, come on. And it collapses so they can't escape come on but moving on now to the endings for ruin i think it's entirely possible there are more multiple endings to the dlc could be something simple as oh you didn't get to gregory in time he's dead sorry he died we free gregory is one ending we free vanessa i don't know maybe we ditch gregory uh, <laughs> in favor of vanessa again i'm spitballing here maybe we save both of them maybe we become corrupt corrupt by the afton amalgamation glitch trap i think there's a lot of possibilities you could go here so uh, we could be speculating for days but i do think in some shape or form there's going to be multiple endings to get one of those endings could even be a teaser for 
Help Wanted 2. Now, I've seen John from FNAF kind of be the main pioneer of this theory because he was the one that pointed out, oh, that panel we see in Ruin, that also shows up in the elevator in the Help Wanted 2 teaser trailer. That could be something very simple as Stu Wool just reusing assets, but also that's a very specific asset to use. Because that's the first time we see it. It was made just for Ruin. So again, could just be something, oh, we need an extra panel here. Didn't we just make one for Ruin? Yeah, just throw it in. But details like that, they always mean something, you know? That's the thing about FNAF. So maybe there's an ending where we go even deeper underground and, oh, wait, we're in an elevator. Oh, wait, this is sister location. Oh, heck and geez, this is another FNAF and Freddy's game. Could also be something simple like the story continues in Help Wanted 2 because... I don't think it's gonna be a complete cliffhanger, but clearly there's still like a new story going on here that was introduced with AR and VR. That's been continued on with Security Breach and Ruin. And because Hub 1 and 2 is another Steel Wall project, I feel like it's gonna utilize similar story beats and characters. So I think there's gonna be a complete direct tease to Hub 1 and 2. Personally, I find that unlikely. It sure would be interesting. I think it would be a lot more impactful if we didn't know what Hub 1 and 2 was coming. But again, whole speculation. I'd love to know, what do you think's gonna happen with the ending? The final space for now, the emotional moment. One of the devs tweeted out that we might cry at ruin. Actually, a few of the devs. I see you too, Sauce. What, what the heck you guys scheming over there for? What, are we gonna cry like a little baby? Who's who's dying? Let me know, who's dying? Place your bets now, folks. Who do you think's gonna die in FNAF ruin? Could it be Freddy? Could it be poor Gregory? That'd actually be really messed up to have a <laughs> child die, but could happen. Could it be my sweet mama Vanessa? I really hope not. Could it be Afton? Maybe once and for all, and maybe we're crying tears of joy because he's finally over. He's dead. He's gone. Could it be the Mimic and we hear John from FNAF cry because it wasn't a parallel? I don't know. <laughs> but clearly, something's getting us emotional, which honestly has me super excited, as messed up as that sounds. FNAF story, when you really think about it, is really, really sad. Filled with a lot of despair. So to actually get that in the games and not just like, oh those sprites just killed those smaller sprites. I think it could be interesting. And again, with this darker tone, it seems like such a drastic shift in tone and message that we usually get in these FNAF games that I'm super intrigued by. So that was my bingo board, basically just an excuse for me to give my hot takes about the upcoming Ruin DLC. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Is there something on here that you think maybe I should have brought up? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this extra long, juicy predictions video for Ruin. And the next video, I will literally see you guys as we play through the Ruin DLC. That's crazy to think about. So subscribe so you don't miss out on that, and I'll see you all back in the Pizzaplex.